Today is November 1st, a Monday in Calcutta where the time is 9.30 p.m. And it is the same day here in Los Angeles around 9 a.m. in the morning. And we shall be speaking with Anirudh Lahiri who was in North Point from 1956 to 1960. So Anida, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine, Ashok. And how about you? Thank you. COVID uh, notwithstanding, we are all doing well and I'm glad to see you so hale and hearty. I have three short questions to ask of you. And the first one sure. is, are you able to name and describe two specific warm and embracing experiences that you had during your time in school that you still regularly think about today? Ashok, I mean the whole time was there full of events full of many warm incidents. So it's for me to mention, to pick out two specific examples is a bit of a challenge. However, I am a disciplined soldier. And since you asked me that I have to mention two specific instances. So, you know, let me think a bit. And well, you know, one of the things that, uh, what do I think about, all right, every day? Let me put that question to me. You know, at one time, I think it was in 57, uh, that I was taken ill. And uh, the illness was pretty bad, you know. And uh, I had to be admitted, but before they took me to the hospital, Brother Quinn, you must have heard of him, who was in charge of the infirmary, the tall Irish brother, Canadian Mounted Police. Yes. And he uh, was in charge of the infirmary. And I tell you that he was a better doctor than most doctors I have known. Because he had so much of experience, uh, you know, collected so much of experience looking after <laughs> the kids in the school. So when I was ill, uh, Brother Quinn uh, admitted me into the infirmary. There were about 12 or 15 beds, and that's where we lay, groaned and moaned, and there was only one person, and that was Brother Quinn, who was dispensing the medicines, getting people to have them, nursing, and just about the whole works, everything that happens when a person is sick. Now, I remember that there was some odd reason it was some kind of a viral those days didn't say viral but something else and there was a raging fever you know and the fever was going up and up and up and the conservative approach that brother queen had he packed ice into an ice bag and kept putting it on my head and believe me or not ashok throughout the night it, without even moving away for an hour, he nursed me the whole evening, looking every, uh, checking my temperatures, you know, every half an hour or so, and charting the temperature to be able to go and relate it to a doctor in case I needed to do so. And the whole night he spent just nursing me, and this was not just one day, but two days under until. The fever was under control and I was able to call out or give a shout to somebody who was there in the infirmary and normally it was Brother Quinn and uh, I was really touched. I mean, I wouldn't have expected this kind of care anywhere, perhaps only at home, but nowhere in, in uh, no hospitals or anything like that. And that is something that touched me so deeply that I keep remembering and particularly so when I'm sick and I say, Brother Quinn, where are you now? <laughs> you know, so that's one event. Remarkable. The other one, uh, Ashok, you were about to remember, I remember many, but one, another one, because, you know, it aided and somehow impacted my sort of what should I say, uh, you know, my, uh, my character. And that was when I was in 
in the LB, in the lower division. That's where I joined school. Uh, I was the youngest guy in class and uh, uh, all my colleagues, they were in UD. But just because I was under 4'10", I had to wear shorts, the suit, the grey suit and the greys and blazer, but everything was short. So I had to wear shorts then. And so, regardless of which class I was in, you know, I was, I had to uh, live in the lower division, dormitory, wherever, whatever is, the dining hall, everything. So one day, I think it was a kind of a warming up session. And uh, father thought, who was the prefect at that time, I don't remember. Uh, I remember his face, but I don't remember his name. But anyway, he thought there should be a bit of a ice-breaking event. And in the LD Pavilion, he, in, he uh, organized a kind of an entertainment show all put up by the boys of PLD. Uh, somebody sang a song, somebody did a, uh, you know, bit of a jig, somebody else did something else, somebody played a flute, somebody played the piano and all that kind of thing. Now, I was a bit of an introvert those days. I was quite withdrawn, new environment. Um, I was quite close as a, as a boy, I was very close. And I think father must have seen this and he said, now, this is something that we have got to correct. He never told me, but he used to put me in hot water quite often. And that evening when this uh, function took place, you know, he suddenly calls me before the function, before the curtains were drawn up. He said, uh, Lahiri, I want you to compare this entire show. No, I was terribly nervous. Nervous. I didn't know what to do, what comparing meant. I never done that thing in my life. And I said, now what do I do? So I scratched my head and I said, well, I'm going to do the best I can and then leave it to everybody else to judge. So I compared the show and I did it. I don't know, I got inspired. I did it remarkably well. Remarkably well. And at the end of the show, after a couple of hours, prizes were distributed. So there were little things given to people, books and this and that and all that. And by the time they had come to the, uh, almost to the end, the prizes were all finished. There was no other prize left because there was nobody else to be given a prize. So I said, would you believe it? Father Prefect, he went up to his room you know where the father stayed in the in the in the uh, the first wing there on the top. They had their little private this thing dining hall and everything, uh, refractory everything there. Yes. So he went up there, got a little some kind of a import and antique import. I remember with an aeroplane on top and little propellers and a little ceramic porcelain import there, and you are supposed to dip your pen and write. You know, for good handwriting, we used to practice with ink and these fountain pens, G, Nib and whatnot. <laughs> he got that to me. And then before the function, he said that coming back, you know, just don't bring the curtains down. Came back and he, then he said, you know, I've got a special present, a little prize for a person who has acted in all the events that has taken place today. And that is Lahiri, because he compared the entire show. So he participated in just about everything that happened. And took this out of his pocket, in a cassette, you know, rolled it up in a, in a, in a, in a packed up in a little silver paper, this thing. He brought it out and gave it to me. Now, I was really touched. <laughs> and why it impacted me so much is because that one incident, became a kind of a watershed for me in my life because I became a totally different person. So much, you know, enthusiasm, self-esteem, confidence that I had made it and my life kind of changed. So it was a, not only a very warm gesture, but was such a nice gesture and something that had a remarkable impact on my character and how I 
led my life thereafter. So these are, I think, two examples that I can give you immediately. But if there was the time, I would give you, I could write, you know, two volumes uh, with so many examples of where, of such experiences where I felt uh, so much, where I received so much warmth and attention. Such touching, touching experiences. And North Point has really left an imprint on you. I can see that. And then from that moment on, your life has changed and, and you became so confident, as you rightfully say, and you went on to great heights. I'm so happy that North Point touches all of us. Well, you know, uh, uh, Ashok, suffice it to say that my life is so full of North Point that even now, so many years later, 50, 60 years later, I still can't pass a day uh, without bringing in some some memories from the North Point, uh, the my North Point days. That is absolutely on cue because it leads to my second question, Anida, and that is, uh, I know that you have been and are also very active in alumni get-togethers. Uh, and you've also attended uh, reunions overseas together with your lovely wife, Ratna Di. And so I ask you, what is the driving force behind your involvement in North Point reunions? A very good question. Very good question. Well, I think the main attraction is leaving North Point once again. So familiar an environment old friends they have, may have great like you and me you know they may have got their faces wrinkled but at the end of the day that basic you know that ethos and the environment you know ref kind of um, completely uh, reflecting uh, the experiences that i've had in north point you know i think that is the main attraction. I'll meet so many friends and I will live it again like that, you know. So that kind of thing. But, uh, uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's painful. But I think that's one of the reasons why I go there. See, every time we've had a reunion and we've come back home, somebody or the other has passed away. Some young, mostly old, they have passed away. Now, the last reunion we went to, you know, there was my good friend Jimmy Pai, a very good friend of mine. And we were, you know, uh, uh, we, we, we'd known each other so well. We used to sit next to each other in the desk. And, you know, I came back and within four or five days, Jimmy Pai had passed away. Now, hadn't I gone for this uh, Ashok, where would I have met Jimmy Pike again? You know, so even though I was meeting him after four or five years, but nevertheless, I met him. And I met him at the end of his life. So it's like, you know, I would describe this union like the confluence of a river, you know. The river starts, the river being me from North Point and then it flows along, long, it traverses a huge journey. And all along, there is North Point or memories of North Point. And then you say, okay, slowly we all will. You know, we will merge with the sea. And that will be the day of the reckoning. But all those who were flow, all those who were with me, the people who were part of that river, you know, you get to see them and then you say, oh my God, I mean, I I was so lucky that I met him, you know. You know, so that's another attraction. You get to meet friends and you don't know who you will meet and who you will not meet the next time you have a reunion. So that's another attraction. Keep renewing your acquaintance. Keep it makes you happy. You know, make makes one, uh, you know, you derive a great sense of fulfillment, you know. That's one of the other reasons why I go. It is, it is absolutely amazing what the reunion does to, does to me and, of course, to my wife also. 
Uh, I love the river analogy. It's so apt, the description that you have given us about uh, how people will meet in the river, the confluence of the river. That's, that's a wonderful description. And then finally uh, entering the wide ocean, where I think we are all at today and this wide world trying to find each other and relive those wonderful moments of the hills of Darjeeling. <laughs> that's very nice. Yeah, I'm you know, you're one with everything. When that moment comes, then you're probably afraid a little, oh my God, where's my identity, where's my everything? But then you realize that, well, that's where, you know, uh, that's the time when you're one with everything, the vast, the vastness of this world. You know? That's very nice. Thank you so much. And here's my last question to you, Anida. There are many yes. things. So, you know, in, when we were in school, there were so many things we learned. We were taught and we picked up that we when we were in school during that time. Um, what are some of those traits that you carried out of North Point uh, with you at that day and that you still use today? So another very good question, I would say, you know, it, uh, it forces you to think. Uh, but as I said, I love thinking about everything that happened around me in North Point. And so it's in a way I derive enormous pleasure in answering these questions, you know, that you put to me. I think uh, Ashok, it's difficult to say what have I kept from my North Point experience, which went with me uh, right through my life. I would say that, you know, if I, um, in the broadest, in the broadest way I can explain, uh, my value system, the values are my greatest treasure. You know, this is a set of values that I have cherished all my life. School, college, you know, working career, here internationally, the value systems. I worked in rather corrupt countries, but, you know, they failed to destroy my value systems. Now, very interesting set of things. I learned from my parents, but these values were then kind of nurtured and ingrained into me by North Point, by my North Point uh, uh, experience. And then, of course, Almost my whole working career, I worked with a company, Unilever, which again was uh, like, uh, uh, you know, supported these values. You know, these days, in our days, you know, as children, we had home and then we had a local community. We had a local chapel or a temple or somewhere where we all met and so on and so forth. But then in later life, it was the education system. Now, that's got completely diluted. But in North Point, I found a place where so much important was based on building character. And what's a character at the end of the day? Character is actually built on a set of values. So if you say, what do I, what have I, what do I remember? What do I use to this day? I would say it's the values that I learned. I empathizing with what, with, others, being able to empathize with others, working as a team, doing the same thing that everybody does, no differences, you know, total transparency and, uh, you know, uh, uh, living in harmony with a community of friends and therefore sacrificing your own individualistic, you know, your singular behavior and adopting plurality. So it's the value systems which have kept me going. That's what I treasure. And I would say that most of it has been ingrained into me, taught by my parents, and then ingrained deeply into me by uh, my stay in North Point. Wow, that's really something to think about. and. Uh... We have similar experiences, all of us like that, 
and uh, it looks as if you're a rock solid person uh, of course uh, the origin from your parents and then like you say um, embellished by your stay in north point and those Absolutely. days so 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 nice to um, uh, hear these comments and i'm sure it'll be so much more loved and appreciated by those who are going to view uh, this interview of yours in the days and years to come so in closing uh, anida just uh, last minute advice that you might give considering that you have stayed in north point and in the in the 60s or late 50s and now you've weaned yourself through all those career moving uh days and years uh, what kind of advice can you leave behind for the rest of north point i would say that you know all our parents uh, all of them are interested in ensuring that we be very successful life they were successful in business i know we'll get out of school then we'll get into some other education or become a professional and then get to work and then spend a lifetime it's like that river you know meandering down you know traversing a huge journey like that now i my advice to everybody would be that to lead a successful life what you need is a set of values so when you are given this kind of an opportunity and a school like north point at least as i knew of north point don't waste this god given opportunity to imbibe as much of the values as you possibly can and if you do so then it will be sunshine all the way through that's a golden nugget and i'm going to take that to heart myself <laughs> so great thank you uh, anida so at this point in time uh, appreciate your time and i hope that uh, you and your family will always keep well and we will we we shall certainly one of these days very soon meet once again and relive those moments not on the screen but face to face so thank you again ashok it was a pleasure talking to you and it's always a pleasure and this time uh it was even a a a, a greater uh um, enjoyment because of the subject that you talked to me about and that's given an opportunity to talk about not point so i sometimes think that if i had another a god said that look you have another life and what would you like to do in your next life so i would say god just ensure them born in the same family and that i go to not point and meet the same friends in the same setting i love it I love it. So be safe Anida, all the best to you. Thank you and a very happy uh Diwali in advance Ashok to you and the family and I really look forward to seeing you when you are here and better make it soon.